everybody. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. It's Brad here at Wild Boys Brewery. Hope you're having a good week. And Thanksgiving's coming up, so hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. Um, probably one of my favorite holidays because I like all the good food. Um, today's update's going to be transferring the Holiday Brown Ale. It is a, oatmeal, a bourbon oatmeal raisin cookie brown ale. Uh, I've talked about this before. It was basically the uh, old nutcase brown ale from Randy Moser's book. You substitute out some of the grains and you put in, uh, I think it's a pound of toasted oats. And I also added some D90 to it. Um, just got through cleaning the keg. Sitting here draining. Got my auto siphon and hose sanitized. This is the, the bourbon. Calls for six ounces of bourbon and some spices. Uh, just off the top of my head, I think it was half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then he said uh, one vanilla bean, but I didn't have any beans, so I just used a little more than one, like a teaspoon and a quarter of vanilla. Uh, you also use like some clove, some nutmeg, and I think that's it. It's just four things. You can see the spices in there. And it's basically, I'm going to let this carb up without anything in it. And then, once it's carved up in about four days, I'll filter this through a coffee filter to get all the spices out of it. So it'll give it some more time to steep. Um, and then, add about, I think it was six ounces is what I said. So I will add, so I'll start off by adding about three ounces to it. Stir it up get it mixed up, do a sample, see how it tastes, and go from there. Uh, and if it doesn't seem like it's quite strong enough to where it needs to be, then I'll add another ounce, do the same thing until it gets where it needs. Uh, kind of doubt it's going to take the whole six ounces, but we'll see. If I need it, I've got it. If I don't, then I'll just save that extract for some real cookies we'll make, put in it, and eat the cookies with the, the brown ale. Okay, and you can see the color here on the brown. It is really nice and brown. And we're racking her off. Ooh la la. So uh, that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to talk about. Uh, I got the grains here. Um, that's the Munich and some of the other adjuncts and uh, specialty grains for my Belgian dark strong ale that I'm going to do. Um, and it's going to be a base. It's going to be a base for that consecration starter right there. So I'm going to put about probably three quarters of that consecration starter in the fermenter after um, it's went through primary and yeast uh, it's, it'll go through a I am using I'm gonna take a page I'm gonna take a page from Vinny's book watch his more beer video and basically I'm gonna do a uh, really high mash temperature do a primary Abbey L yeast Saccharomyces primary fermentation uh, then I will rack it well I probably won't rack it I'll just leave it in primary and then I'm gonna pitch some Brett yeast on it and let the bread yeast go for I think six or eight weeks so they can get a foothold and then I will probably rack it to secondary at that point or I may just leave it in primary I hadn't decided and put that consecration uh, drag starter in it because that's got all the uh, bugs from the consecration in it, the pediococcus and lactobacillus that he uses and that's the method that he uses when he makes the actual consecration and I probably will just probably just leave it in primary uh, and let it go for about six months check it and see where it's at and then rack it on to some fruit some uh, black currants or um, may use uh, blackberries I hadn't decided uh, probably just try to find some black currants and use that since that's what he actually uses in the real thing throw a uh, some um, what is it uh, Sauvignon I think uh, wine barrel soaked uh, spiral in there uh, just basically I think it's I'm gonna have to go back and look I'm pretty sure it's the Sauvignon is what they uh, 
soak the uh, well they they actually age it in the barrel so I may just go ahead and do a uh, Sauvignon spiral go ahead and start soaking that and just throw it in right off the bat right after uh, right after I, it goes through primary I'll probably just toss it in since they go into the barrel straight off the bat so you're not really since it goes so long you really don't have that much worry over one spiral over oaking it uh, and then plus it's going to wind up going through another fermentation later with the uh, black crants or whatever type of fruit I put in there and that will probably scrub a little bit of the barrel character out of it too because um, yeast will pretty much when they do their thing they scrub a lot of flavors out that's why you're better off putting your delicate flavors like fruit and some, some other stuff like that honey into secondary than you are primary but we'll I'll, I'll I'll document it as I go along on what I do and uh, we'll uh, check it out from there. So I'm going to wrap this up. I uh, hope you guys are having a good week. Happy Homebrew Wednesday and cheers.